Okay, it is May the 28th, Sunday evening, 20 minutes before the weekly close. Let's do the market outlook and plans for the week ahead. So let's go ahead and start off with the news events. Um, this week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we actually have quite a lot of stuff. Um, so on Wednesday, we have the FOMC speaker. On Thursday, we have unemployment, PMI, and an FOMC speaker. And then on Friday, we're going to have uh, unemployment and um, hourly average earnings, um, which I don't really care about personally. So um, I think that the main things to pay attention to are going to be the FOMC talks and the PMI. Um, those generally will produce some vol. It's not a major speaker like Powell, um, but still worth keeping on the radar this week. Okay, let's go ahead and get into legacy markets. Let's start off with the S&P. <clears throat> so as it stands, um, it looks like we are breaking upwards. So you guys have uh, heard me talk about this a million times over now, um, but we we're monitoring this development to this range. Um, with the way that the NASDAQ has been trading, it seems pretty obvious that the S&P is going to follow suit. Um, so nice bounce from the macro comp, and it's probably going to continue to trade up this direction, if I had to guess. Um, so we're looking at FTA uh, upside. Um, it's probably going to be this HVN around 43 and a half. Um, that's going to be the major thing to be paying attention to. Um, apart from that, uh, I don't have too much to worry about over here. Um, I think that, you know, at this point, my downside expectations of trading down to 4K is pretty much invalidated. With the way that the NASDAQ is ripped up, it really just seems like risk is going to continue to um, follow. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, basically give up on my bearishness for the time being and um, start to lean heavily into that. So that'll make a little bit more sense once we get into Bitcoin. Um, let's cover the NAS really quickly. Um, so just for, to have some perspective, right, you know, this was the, the same range that we were just looking at with the S&P and the NASDAQ is completely expanded from there. Um, it's, it is trading into major resistance right now, which is the one thing um, to be aware of is that, you know, around, you know, 14.2 where it's at now um, is representing pretty significant resistance. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a pullback, especially a pullback going into maybe one of the news events this week. Um, but that's going to be definitely a buy the dip event if that comes. So um, the trends are continuing to play out to the upside. So we want to we want to lean into that. Um, that's pretty much it for the S&P and the NAS. I don't have too much else to cover. Um, you know, I do get invalidated if, you know, immediate trend structure starts to fail. So, you know, if we start to accept below this range, um, so basically if we accept below 41 and a half, give or take, you know, plus or minus 20 points, um, that would probably be invalidation for bullishness. Um, but it's, it's definitely shaping up. Um, quite nicely to the upside and um, it lines up really well with my Bitcoin plans. We should go ahead and get into that topic Move over to the corn. Let's start off with higher time frame stuff um, So um, With the biggest picture um, the important conversation to have um, and I was talking about this on the Paragon stream on Friday is that um, We need to be prepared for the idea that the bottom is in I wanted to see us trade down um, into the, you know, dip into the upper 24s and the lower 25s. And we really haven't seen that. And, um, for, you know, definitely um, can argue that this is a bottoming structure that we found here. We'll present that argument when we zoom in more uh, later in the video. But um, I do think it's extremely important to be aware um, that bear, we definitely have bear structure still. Um, but, you know, my thesis was that we would trade down in this region, find support and trade back up for upside, you know, trend continuation. Um, so I want to be prepared for the idea that, um, you know, we don't trade down as low as I had hoped for. Um, you know, the inability to trade down can be construed as bullish. So again, um, we're definitely trading into very sticky areas right now from a resistance standpoint. So I wouldn't be um, advising putting on risk just yet. Um, we should be very light on our feet right now with the anticipation that if we see upside continuation, we we've got to grab on to the, the tail of the comet and uh, get dragged up with it because um, I think a lot of people are going to stay flat footed going into June and um, they're going to get left behind most likely. So um, let's go ahead and zoom in so I can present those arguments a little bit better. So like I had talked about on the recent streams, um, what I'm looking for um, is, you know, basically continued reclaims. So what we're seeing on Sunday today um, is the definitely the first sign that I was looking for. Um, I wanted to see us, you know, a, be able to push through um, the monthly VWAP and you know challenge the quarterly, and reaccept back into this comp from um, mid March. 
Um, this is a pretty fat comp. It was like three weeks long. So acceptance back into that um, it definitely should be um, considered to be bullish. Um, so we're definitely very diddle in the middle right now where um, the first line in the sand for bearishness has been invalidated for me now. Um, and the second line in the sand is going to be this 28.8 region. So this is definitely what I'm looking for. Um, whether we pull back and trade back up again, I'm going to be light on my feet and potentially um, be, you know, eager to put risk on. So to be clear, um, let's mark that out. Um, this is the first kind of region that we needed to get through and we've successfully blasted through that. So we need to see that hold. And then uh, 288 is the next region that we're looking for. Once we get back above 288 and you see some sort of sideways price action above this, um, there's absolutely no reason to be bearish anymore, in my opinion. Um, so that pretty much covers it for the, the plans. Um, as far as, you know, VWAPs go, um, on higher time frame, we're definitely, we found support at the current year, or excuse me, the previous year's VWAP. Give you guys a better image on that really quickly. Let's go ahead and delete these things. We don't need them anymore. Already served their purpose. Okay, so... We found support at the last year's VWAP, which is overlapping at the LVN. This was the main support region we were looking for. Um, so, you know, last year's VWAP and current year's VWAP are our you know, major supports we're eyeing. And then the major resistance that we're going to be eyeing is the HVM we're trading into, as well as current quarterly VWAP um, from the beginning of April is the major resistance that we're dealing with right now, overlapping with that HVM. So um, basically, um, we have one more kind of resistance. If we're able to get through that, that's probably going to end up looking like a you know, a shift in the immediate kind of trend structure of this downtrend. So to start to get back through it, and hopefully we can start to make higher lows um, to trade up into the 33, you know, 34, 33 region. Um, so nothing's really changed for my plan. Um, the bearishness is getting invalidated, um, which you love to see. And that's, you know, ultimately what I kind of expected. Um, what I will say is it's coming much earlier than I anticipated. I expected that I would be pivoting in June you know, mid to late June, but it looks like the pivot's coming um, at the beginning of June. So very interesting to see. Um, it's pretty common for us to, for markets to kind of front run these pivots. Um, when the obvious time to pivot comes, normally it's going to, you know, either be before or after that. So we're, we're going with the before option here. That pretty much covered it for the rundown. For more information, check out the Paragon group with the link below, where I cover everything from how I trade to how you can develop your own style. Let's go ahead and get into some altcoin talk. The first altcoin I'm going to talk about is going to be ETH. I know I don't normally talk about ETH that much, but I did want to cover this. Um, ETH has very similar structuring to Bitcoin. Um, however, it has, you know, arguably more bullish structure in the immediate picture. Um, it was unable to trade down as low as um, I wanted to see it trade down. And um, I think that, you know, it's, since it's already fighting for its reclaim on its quarterly, you know, the structure on ETH is actually arguably more bullish. Um, and the bear trend over here throughout, you know, March, April into May is just not as pronounced on ETH. ETH did not trade down um, the same way that Bitcoin did. So my hard time frame thesis on ETH is, you know, still pretty bullish, um, you know, with how things will shape up over the next couple of years. But um, in the more immediate term, I think that, um, you know, ETH is probably going to be a pretty good trade. So my anticipation is that I will probably be buying more ETH spot. Um, to actually have a, a long position put on um, for the immediate picture. Let's go ahead and get into some other altcoins. Um, first one to be covering is going to be Tomo. Um, this has been a, one of my favorites to trade recently. Um, what we, we got some pretty crazy price action today. Um, a really big short just got blown out. Um, so I, you know, I wouldn't be super eager to get in position just yet. Uh, I would be waiting. Basically my anticipation is that we should kind of bleed back down towards this high volume node. So I have my alert set here. Um, if you know, Tomo wants to trade back down to like a dollar 40 all the way down to maybe like a dollar 20 at the lowest, um, you know, definitely a good buy the dip region. So I will be probably playing upside continuation on Tomo. Um, again, I really enjoyed playing this coin. Um, obviously, I didn't, you know, catch this ridiculous 100% move that we just got or anything, but the trend structure has been so clean and orderly um, throughout, you know, the entire year, basically, that Tomo has just been an absolute gem to trade. Um, ARPA, let's take a quick look at this one. So this is one that I traded a lot um, while it was, you know, doing some pretty crazy volume. Um, this seems pretty reasonable that we're pulling back here. Um, I want to, you know, maybe see a little bit more orderly structuring start to develop on this one before I might, you know, be down to basically play upside continuation. Where it's trading at right now is pretty major support. 
So the, the one downside to this tray is that this FTA up here, obviously this looks like a pretty clear distributive range up here. Um, I was trading it when it was going sideways up here for a while. And yeah, it was definitely got the distributive vibes. So the one shitty thing about this long thesis is that, you know, you're going to be longing back into supply potentially. Um, so this FTA kind of sucks, but um, you know, if it really gets going, it'll probably trade right through that. It really largely depends on what the, you know, bigger picture of the market's doing. But I think that this is a pretty reasonable play. Um, it'd be nice if I could trade it down a little bit lower, but really you're probably not going to get too much lower on, on ARPA. Uh, let's look at render next. Um, so render was one, of course, um, this was my plan to buy the dip over here. And, um, I did not do that, unfortunately. So we're going to go ahead and put the copium alert in. So maybe it gives me a chance to enter it again. Render is really strong right now off the back of the AI narrative. Um, so definitely one to be paying close attention to. Uh, next one is Ant. I don't even know what this coin is, but I've been watching it a little bit and it's really strong. So um, this is definitely one that could be good for upside continuation. Um, the trend structure is definitely there. Um, Litecoin. So this is one of the ones that I've been accumulation mode on. Uh, my bag every you know every couple of days is getting larger. I am effectively DCAing back into this. So my original thesis on Litecoin, you know, I bought at the beginning of uh, or I bought at the end of 2023 to hedge my bearishness going into the beginning of the year because I was still pretty bearish at the end of December. Um, so I bought, you know, in the 64, 65 region, I sold it in the 90s, and I'm buying it back again, basically where, you know, where I sold it um, for upside continuation. So it, it's time to be ADIQ, guys. Um, the Litecoin happening is, you know, probably like 66 days away or something like that. I don't know. Definitely less than 70 at this point. Um, every time, you know, I've seen a Litecoin happening, um, it plays out the same. We trade up. You know, we sell the news event, you know, basically we want to be front running the happening. Um, so yeah, I will probably be taking profit before the happening actually goes through. Um, and then just transitioning my mindset into other coins because historically after the Litecoin happening goes through, the volatility dies out and it just becomes, you know, a really weak coin following that. Take a quick look at Tron. Yeah, so Tron was one I was looking at a pullback on this one. Um, I really despise the structuring on this coin it's been absolutely disgusting especially in march but you know it's has bullish structuring so it could be potentially one to keep an eye on um, with it being kind of a mid cap uh, it's really not one that i'm going to prioritize i i much prefer to trade um you know the lower market cap coins in something like tron uh, kava was another one to pay attention to um, this thing had a very similar, you know, setup as what Tomo had, where you just completely illiquid move off of some idiot closing out a short um, into low liquidity. Um, the trend structuring on this thing was pretty disgusting in May, but you know you can't can't disregard how strong it's been. So I first started paying attention to it once it started to reclaim these VWAPs, and it's ever since then it's just continued to be one I'm paying close attention to. Um, next thing to cover is going to be EDU. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like I'm getting left behind on this one. Um, I just was not quick to act. Um, my original plan was we were trading over here. I said I want to reclaim the VWAP and then we'll trade up. Um, of course, I just totally missed it because I was uh, in weekend mode. Um, but this is probably going to be doing the classic Binance Launchpad thing where you know it goes into just, you know accumulation range. It's probably going to mark up and then come right back down to this range. So this is something to be paying attention to. Um, it's classic Binance, you know, launch pad listing scam. We go into accumulation following the listing. We're going to pump it up and it's going to come right back down probably. Um, so if this wants to do something like this, where maybe it cools down and comes back, right? You could probably make the argument about jumping on. Um, the risk to reward will definitely be there. And I do think that there's edge on betting on launch pad tokens that haven't pumped yet. Um, I don't think that there's any launchpad tokens that don't go up eventually. Um, that's pretty much it for altcoins. There are a lot of other altcoins that um, should maybe you know, maybe you want to keep an eye on. But to be honest, most of them are very diddle in the middle right now, which is not where I want to be. Um, when they're mussing around with these you know large ranges and they have VWAPs above and below, and I, I don't want to be fucking with those coins personally. So um, I'm going to just basically ignore most of the other coins and, and wait for them to, to shape up. Um, INJ was maybe one that I did want to maybe maybe the last coin to introduce um, is going to be INJ. Um, so I, I want to basically see us reclaim the quarterly. And if we reclaim the quarterly, um, I don't really think that this HGN is going to represent too much of a, 
you know, resistance. Um, because this ultimately is kind of what I expected for INJ. Uh, my first alert was around like, I don't know, 580 or something like that. Kind of was hoping we would trade into the yearly VWAP a little bit more cleanly, but it looks like we're not going to get that. So if we're not, you know, going to trade down lower like I wanted to, basically just getting through this, you know, we can play upside continuation. So a lot of coins are looking like this where they're challenging for the trend structure, you know, change with the VWAPs. And if that's the case, then, you know, um, they're all going to be good longs basically. But at the end of the day, you know, all this is going to come down to what the corn is doing and ultimately um, the main driver of markets right now is the NASDAQ guy. So really pay close attention to the NASDAQ. As long as the NAS continues to trade upwards, you're going to want to trade shit coins upwards. It's as simple as that. Okay, that's pretty much it for the higher time frame altcoin stuff. The only other altcoin thing I wanted to mention is going to be around um, scalping. So I've gotten... Uh, a lot, you know, I've gotten he pretty heavily back into scalping in the month of May, um, largely out of necessity, just because if you want to be, um, you know, if you want to be actively trading, um, the momentum was only existing on a couple coins here and there. So um, basically just finding the hot coins, you know, with the scalper scanner and then trading them, you know, so right now that's going to be things like Tomo just because of the liquidation event that Tomo had. But last week it was all ARPA for me. Before ARPA, it was Pepe. Um, before Pepe, I don't remember what it was, um, maybe Doge or something, I don't remember, but basically whatever's doing volume, I'm going to go PvP on, um, so I do have the anticipation to try to do the larger momentum swings, and in the meantime, to distract myself, I'm going to go and PvP on whatever is doing high ticks, so whatever's doing high ticks and doing decent volume, that's where you want to go PvP this week, and I'll see you in those books, and um, good luck, because you're going to need it. So um, good luck, everybody, and um, I'll see you out there in the books. Cheers.